True crime, tell for sake, well, you too. Um, of course, due to all the rough, intense moments that have happened to me, <laughs> about a week ago, I was watching Unsolved Mysteries. Found this story, and I need to put it up right away, of course. And I uh, hope in the end of this. Uh, this really gets the help it needs. But, uh, yeah, I forgot to do it, of course, and been meaning to get back into some cases. But finally I've got a little time, and finally I want to get this one up as, of course, as quick as I can. Carrie Lynn Nixon. Once again, Unsolved Mysteries. I think this aired back in... Of course, this is the girl. She disappeared in uh, June 22nd, 87. I think this aired on... Uh, Unsolved Mysteries, maybe... 89 or so or something like that the dates on here but anyway she went to go there's a girl running errands for her father and uh, they went bowling uh, before she went to the store she bought groceries Headed back home by 10.10, between 10.05 and 10.10. It was five-minute window. And she vanished just like that. Of course, the next day, not found in her bed. Some believe she was abducted. Some believe she ran away because she told a friend that she wanted to leave the area, go to either Hawaii, California, or Florida. The months passed, the investigation grew to a standstill. Uh, in South Carolina, went down there to put up some signs. Um, supposedly, there was a woman in summer '87. She was certain that the girl was her because of her hair, earrings. Of course, excuse me, of her name. <clears throat> and the girl told her that she was supposedly from New York. She was staying in the area. The woman, Shirley, said that Carrie had two earrings, long brown hair. Apparently seemed shy and unwilling to talk to her. And positively worked in a group that dealt with runaways. She was certain the girl she had met was the runaway. Authorities local uh, located the girl that Shirley claims was with Kier that day but she met her. However, she reportedly had a memory lapse and was unable to recall the events after fa failing to find any other confirmed sightings of Carrie. The investigators again reached a dead end. I think I kind of remember this one because of this next ordeal right here. They um now they did now this guy now this person came out as a professional face analyst, and I can tell you right now, man, I'm sorry that this girl on the left that they claimed and swore up and down was the girl on the right, <laughs> but I can tell you. And assure you that um, they are definitely not identical. But they claim that this was her. Look at the jaw. Look, I mean, <clears throat> I can see already the mistake of this jaw being pointier and this one going, you know, more like a, you know, a U. And, uh, 
this picture over here, the jawline, don't go straight way upside the face. And this one to the left happens, as you can see, clearly points out and goes bottom. More straight than straight up. So, I mean, but they swore up and down this was a girl. And this was a kid on the block concert, mind you. And they literally had the kids on the block. Um, right here, filmed a music video. And they all pleaded for Carrie to get home. You know? We, we can understand if we've got some problems. Just get home, call your family, do something. But guess what? It wasn't her. That was not her. And like I said, you can see... Clearly... Because they uh, carry the original picture of the of the right, uh, the tip of her nose is like more pointy, and the one on the left don't have no. It, it's like uh, a straight point. Over here, it sounds like you got a little bump that goes down on the right photo. So you can clearly tell that that's not her. But they had a professional on this. You know, everybody, and the girl in the video identified herself. She was a teenager from Washington, D.C. Oh, well, see, sorry. <laughs> Almost seven years after Carrie vanished, on January 20th, 1994, her body was unearthed. Shallow grave, only miles from her home. In this one, Robert Anthony Jones confessed to her kidnapping. Mind you, this piece of shit has a wife and two kids. Supposedly had marital problems. So just go rape and murder a girl, innocent child. Been arrested for bank robberies. Committed in New York and Maine. And that he had confessed to his wife. And this guy, this piece of shit right here, give you a little glimpse. That's enough. Um, try to get a lighter sentence for her, his wife. Even though the woman cheated on him. <laughs> Which then I can understand why, because obviously he wasn't good enough. Big old P.O.S. he looks like. Um... You no, know, he took his two local kids at a local bank robbery. His two kids. So you can tell how much this guy is a piece of crap. And, um, you know, he got his life sentence. He got 18 years of life, I believe. But you know what? That's not good enough for him. And she was found only 20 yards from where he had buried her. He he buried her pretty much on a family property that he was visiting uh, at the time, because uh, he used he lived. Um, But anyway, you know, he fucking was in the neighborhood where the girl was, kidnapped her. And, uh, the first parole hearing in 2011, where he was denied all subsequent appeals have been denied, and he will be next be eligible for parole in January of 2021. And I hope that they do not grant him parole. That's why I wanted to show this quick. Here we are in January. Who knows when it's going to happen? But he's eligible for parole. 
gets away with bank robberies, federal offense, and murdering an innocent girl, and putting his two kids and wife. It, I don't know, man. <laughs> Just ridiculous. This guy should be hung. This guy should be left in a room with his privates nailed to a stump and set that stump on fire. That's right. Burn them. Get rid of them. Waste of space. Waste of taxpayers' money. Yep. And, uh, because he abducted the victim because of marital difficulties. So, your poor punk ass is crying that your Teresa wife had cheated on you. <laughs> and he did the robbery in order to get caught. But, oh man, this, this is just, I hope somebody really, really does not let him out. But I just wanted to share that one because, yeah, that was one of them that really got me. And, of course, with my problems going on, I forgot all about it. <laughs> I wanted to get it. I think I got it out at least a week, maybe a week and a half. But, hey, at least I got it out now. So, so that you know what our great justice system is still doing, huh? <laughs> oh, man. Hope you rot in hell. But wanted to show that, share that. Until the next video, be safe. Take care. Always beware. As you can see. And knowing in fact that this guy could have another parole board. And what if he did get out, you know? He just sit there and think and say, what the f I don't think he's any better sitting in the prison that long and, you know, yeah, I'm going to get some oh, prayers to God and everything and I've gone Christian and, but then you walk right out in the street and all the evil hits back up on you again. Yeah, okay. I hope someone buries you before you even go to your parole here and you piece of shit. Until the next video. Be safe. Out.